there are four ways to handle navigation in Next.js. And there is not one way that works for every scenario. So you need to understand all four ways and the differences between them so you can make the best possible decision for given situation. In this video, we will go through those four methods to handle navigation in Next.js application. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first and probably most commonly and widely used method for navigating is by using the link component. And what this page looks like in the code, it is like this. So we are first importing the link component from next link, and then we are rendering the links like this. So we pass in the href prop and as a value, the address we want to navigate through this link to. And as you might see, this is pretty similar as you would do with the uh, HTML a tag. And to be honest, you should use the link tag whenever you would use an a tag in HTML. So there is no need to use the a tag in Next.js, but instead use the link component. And how this works is now we have our link. So when we click them, it normally uh, navigates to that page like this. And as I said, the link component is pretty similar to a tag, but the link component has some features and properties that the a tag doesn't have. And one of these is prefetching. And prefetching is enabled by default in Next.js 14 for the link component. And if you're not familiar with prefetching, it's a way to improve the user experience by preloading the routes in the background before the user visits them. So when you're using the link component, the route is automatically prefetched as it becomes visible in user's viewport. And this happens when the page is first loaded or when the link components come into the view through viewing. So let's see an example of this. So what I'm going to do actually is add a couple of more line breaks over here like this. So we get the second link out of the viewport. And now if we check the page, we have the page one link. And then if we scroll down, we have the page two. And one important thing in the prefetching is that it doesn't happen in development mode. So we need to build our application and then run it in uh, production mode. So I'm going to stop my server and build the application and then start it like this and switch back to the browser. And now I'm going to clear my network tab in the dev tools and I'll refresh the page. And as we can see on the left hand side, let me make it a bit bigger. We fetch the page one because uh, the link is in view of the viewport. So it's prefetched. But now see what happens when we scroll down. Uh, when the page two comes into the view, it should trigger a prefetch to that page two too. So let's scroll down like that. And now when it came to the viewport, it triggered the prefetch for that page two too. And now it's prefetched, so it opens up instantly. So the link component is the most basic way to handle navigation from page to another in Next.js application. But there are still three more ways to handle the navigation. So let's check out the next one. So the next one is by using the use router hook. So if we need to programmatically trigger a navigation inside of a client component, use router hook is the way to go. Let's say, for example, that we want to make an API request. And once that request is finished, we want to trigger the navigation. Well, use router hook is the right tool for that. So let's take a look on how to use the use router hook. So right here, I have the code for the page. So first of all, this is a client component. So we can use hooks only inside of the client components. So that goes for the use router hook too. So we are importing it from next navigation, then we are using it over here. And then we have a button over here that says go to my page. And as an on click handler, we have the uh, function called on click. And the function itself is over here. And here we are just logging something in the console. So this would be the place where you make the API request, for example, if you want. And once that finished, we are calling the router push with the page we want to navigate to as a parameter. So it's that simple. So let's switch back to the browser and test this out. So I'm going to clear my console just so we see the message. So now when I click the 
uh, button. It logs the uh, console log to the console and then navigates to the uh, slash to slash my page. So again, this is the way to go if you want to programmatically navigate to another page. And this was for client components, but what if we need to navigate inside of server components? Well, that's the third way we are gonna take a look. Before the next way, I just wanna quickly tell you about this week's sponsor, Elgato. So you might have heard that Elgato makes products for gamers and streamers, but they are also great for software developers. I, for example, have been using their products such as the Keylights, Mic Arms, the Stream Deck for a long time already. The latest addition for me has been the Elgato Prompter. So it's a teleprompter, but not a traditional one, because it enables you to use it as a second monitor. This means that you can put any window from your computer to the prompter screen. It is also compatible with wide variety of DSLR, web and other cameras. I have found the prompter super handy, especially when I'm in meetings. So what I can do, for example, if I'm presenting is to put my presentation to the prompter. So this way I can look at straight to my presentation and the camera at the same time. So other people in the meeting will also see me maintaining natural eye contact. Or if the meeting is kind of boring, or the kind of meeting that I don't have to be focusing 100% on. What I actually like to do is put my VS code into the prompter so I can code while I'm in the meeting and people in the meeting are none the wiser. So check out the Elgato prompter and other products that Elgato has from the link in the description. And thank you again Elgato for sponsoring this week's video. So the third way is using the redirect function. So where we use use router with client components in server components, uh, we need to use the redirect function in order to trigger a navigation. So let's say that this page over here would be visible only for users that are logged in. So when we are coming to this page, we want to check that if user is logged in and if they are not, we will re redirect them to a login page. So let's switch to the VS code and see how this can be done. So over here, Again, this is a server component and we are importing the redirect from next navigation. And inside of our component, we are getting this is logged in value for, with this function. And right now it just returns true. And then when we are rendering, we check if the user is not logged in, we are redirecting them to the login page. But if they are logged in, then we will render the rest of the page. So right now, as we saw, it shows the is the page one, uh, but if we go one back and then change this is user logged in to return false, like this. And now if we click the link again, we can see that it says login, please login. And from the URL, we can see that we are on the login page. So that's how you can redirect or navigate with server components. And the last method we will cover today is by using the native history API. So Next.js allows us to use the native windows.history.pushState or replace state methods to trigger navigation between routes. So what this looks like in the code? Well, right here I have the page. So it's a client component because we are using the browser APIs. And uh, right here I have two buttons. Both have an on-click handler. And inside of the handler, we are using first in the uh, on click push state, the push state API, and then the replace state API. And what this looks like in the action. So if we go back to the browser, if we click the navigate using push state, we can see that the URL up here changes to another page. And if we take that away and use the replace state, that also does the same thing. Note right here is that the browser won't attempt to load this URL after the push date call, but it may attempt to load the URL later, for instance, when refreshing the page. So now when we have used the push date link and if we refresh the page, it will navigate to that uh, another page URL. So that's something to keep in mind when using these two methods. And personally, to be honest, I have never used the history API this way. 
and I have managed with the other navigation methods. But it is good to know that this is also an option in case you are in a situation where you need this kind of behavior. This was a quick walkthrough for the navigation methods in Next.js, both with server and client components. And I'm constantly making more and more Next.js and web development content, and I am sharing it here on YouTube, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and also on my newsletter, where you can find a link down below in the description, so please do check it out if you are interested.